Hi, welcome to this second video in the series on domain and range of functions. I'm assuming you watched the first video in this series. If not, do go back and check it out. But what I want to do in this one is just extend that work a little bit further, okay? I've got two functions here I'm going to be working on where we're going to find the domain and range of them. g of x equaling root x and h of x equaling 3 over x minus 1. Now as I pointed out in the previous video, when it comes to domain and range, you must be familiar with the graphs. If you're not familiar with the graphs, then I don't feel that you stand much chance in being able to appreciate the domain and range of the functions. So let's start anyway with g of x equaling root x, the square root of x. You should be familiar with this graph. It looks something like this. When we take the square root, say, of 0, clearly it's going to be 0. So it actually goes through the origin here. If you were to take the square root of, say, 1, it would be 1. And notice it's not plus or minus 1. I'm only just taking the positive values here. Square root of 4, for instance, when x is 4, would be 2. And this graph is going to gradually keep going on like this, going up and up and up and up for values of x which increase in this direction. You can't square root a negative number. So this graph is undefined for negative numbers. So when it comes to our domain and range, what's it going to be? Well, the domain is clearly going to be all x values. This is going to be defined for all x values which are greater than or equal to 0. All right? And when it comes to the range, well, remember that was all the y values that you're going to get back when you substitute your values of x into the function. Well, if we were to substitute any value of x which was greater than or equal to 0 into our function, our y values are just going to be all of these ones up here. And this graph's going to carry on going up and up and up like this. So, our range will be all values on the axis, the y-axis, that go from 0 upwards forever and ever. And we define that as g of x is greater than or equal to 0. Now in this next example, I've got g of x equaling root x again. Only this time, x is defined for greater than or equal to 4, but less than 25. So what's this graph going to look like? Well, if we were to copy it back in, we know it looks something like this. But if we restrict the domain, then I'm going to be going from x is 4, so just mark that in, that let's just suppose that's 4, up to 25. Let's say that that is 25. And I'm going to need to know what the values at these extreme points are at 4 and at 25. So if I was to work out g of 4, g of 4 is going to be the square root of 4, which is clearly 2. And if I work out the square root of 25, g of 25, well, that's going to be 5. So that means that... When x is 4, I get 2, so I'll mark that in there as 2. And when x is 25, I get 5, so I'll mark that in up there. This is not drawn to scale, as I say, OK? So this graph is limited, OK? So if I was to put a point in there, I can rub out this bit here, back down to there. And also, when x is 25, we got a value of 5. So I can rub out from here onwards. But remember, when x is 25, it wasn't really going to reach 25. 
it was just less than 25. So our values for g of x would always be less than 5. So what I'm going to do is just put an open circle there. So what will our domain and range be? Well, the domain is the values of x that are greater than or equal to 4, but less than 25. And we've seen that the range then turns out to be these values that go from 2, can equal 2, upwards up to 5, but can never equal 5. So we say that g of x goes from 2, but it can equal 2, so it's greater than or equal to 2, but less than 5. OK? We now come on to this last function here, h of x equals 3 over x minus 1. And again, we need to sketch this graph. And we can build this up from the reciprocal graph 1 over x. You should be familiar with this graph. It has this shape here, and the graph doesn't cross the x-axis or the y-axis. It doesn't cross the y-axis purely because you cannot divide by 0. 1 divided by 0 is undefined. Then what we need to do is we can think of multiplying this by 3 to get 3 over x. And if you do that, you get a stretch of this graph by scale factor 3 parallel to the y-axis with the x-axis invariant. So basically, it has much the same kind of shape. Now we can head towards this function here, h of x, just by replacing the x with x minus 1. And that's going to cause the graph to translate one unit to the right, giving us 3 all over x minus 1. In other words, h of x. And we have the asymptote now has moved across one unit. So its equation is x equals 1. So that's how we can build this graph up. So what I'll do is I'll just remove the other graphs. And so what we have then is h of x, 3 all over x minus 1. Now it's important to realize that this graph carries on out in this direction, never crossing the x-axis, and it continues up in this direction, never crossing this asymptote, this line, x equals 1. And the same applies to this part of the curve here. This goes out to negative infinity, just carries on down there, and this goes downwards to negative infinity. So, when it comes to the domain and the range, what have we got? Well, the domain is going to be all x values, all real values, except x equals 1. You cannot put 1 into here because you'll end up with 3 divided by 0, which is undefined. So our domain then is written that x is any real number except 1. OK, so we say x does not equal 1. And when it comes to the range, we're looking at all the y values that you can get. OK, h of x, if y equals h of x. All these values down here. Well, you can get all the y values except 0. y never equals 0 because the curve never crosses the x-axis. So for the range, we have got h of x, h of x is any real value, so we can say that it's any real value, except h of x does not equal 0, OK, because it doesn't cross the x-axis. So there we go, just another tutorial then, extending our work on domain and range. So thanks for watching, and do please subscribe so that you can get updates of my videos that I upload. And uh, hopefully see you again in another video if you need further support.